back to the channel. We're taking a little bit of a break from our touring around the countryside. Uh, we've had to come back to our farm. We're going to be doing a little bit of house renovation, but that's not what this is all about. I alluded to setting up the hydrogen on the truck previously. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to be setting up the hydrogen on the truck in this video. Um, pretty much it's one of those things that if you decide to follow anything that I'm doing, do your own research first. I've put a fair bit of time and effort into researching all of this, but I've also been running it previously on my Land Rover Discovery uh, diesel, and I was happy with the results on that. Um, I have removed it from the Land Rover, because we're not using it, to fit up onto the truck. I'm lucky enough that the unit I've had on the Land Rover is more than capable of coping with the truck. Um, some uh, units that are available you know, from eBay, internet and whatever else like that, I would give a big wide berth to them because you will be very, very disappointed in their performance. Um, this is something that a lot of people have fear about. Hydrogen uh, is, yes, very explosive. We're not storing hydrogen. This is called hydrogen on demand. So there is no storage tanks as such. We produce hydrogen as we're driving along. Um, and I'll explain how and why um, a little bit further on. And I'll show you the componentry and, and so on. From where I've had it set up in the Land Rover, um, I've got to do a lot of rejigging, purely and simply because the, the Land Rover was an experiment and I was leaving everything in the container that, that it was set up in originally. Um, well, now I'm going to break those parts up. So the, um, the, the actual controls of it, the electronic controls, will be fingertip controls within the cabin. Um, and I'll show you, you know, the, the, the reason for that there a little bit further on. Um, where we're going to put the main unit, the hydrogen generator, will be in behind the truck. So if you come with me, in behind the cabin, we're going to mount it up inside here, virtually above the gearbox and behind the, uh, the cabin of the truck. So that will be the main um, area that it will fit into. And the rest of it will be fitted in um, within the cabin and on the, the body of the truck here. So I'll take you into the, to the workshop and I'll show you some of the componentry, how it works, what it does, and try and explain it. Um, as I said, if you were going to look at doing this sort of thing, and I know some people are already interested, um, do your research. It, if not set up correctly, can be uh, dangerous. Uh, there is always that, that risk of explosion. Um, doing what we're doing, we've eliminated much of the risk. Um, that I've, I've got to you know, sort of stress that. If it's not set up correctly or you don't do and follow all the steps, yeah, there, there can be an explosion within the truck. You're not going to blow the thing to pieces. You'll just damage components. So we'll wander into the, into the workshop and I'll show you what's going on. Basically, this is where I'm starting at and show you what, what things do and how they work. I've modified this. This is the electronic control unit. Um, there's a lot of electronics in it. Um, what we had, this chunt here, was on the outside of the unit. Um, the little variable resistor here was at the end of the unit and the amp gauge air was always in there. These parts are, are necessary so that you can monitor it. What I will do is where this here was inside the box that housed all the unit, this will now sit just like this underneath the dash so I can reach that, that dial there. This will vary the amperage um, going into the unit itself. So from where I'll be sitting driving, I'll be able to see the amp gauge. Um, we'll be running it somewhere around about 28, 29 amps. Um, of power going into the generator, okay? That will 
change the, um, the amperage going into it. Now, the hydrogen generator, this is a little bit different. At present, it looks pretty daggy because I've been sealing the, the, the thing up. I did have a few leaks through there. So I've, I've put sealer and around the, the bolts. That also doubles up as a means of, I'll, I'll call it like a Loctite. It stops things from vibrating loose. Pretty much what happens, we have a water reservoir. This is one I prepared earlier. The water reservoir will sit up against the back of the, um, the, the front of the body of the truck. So it's about three litres of, of liquid. The liquid itself is distilled water, not demineralized water. Distilled water, it has to be distilled. So you'll have a solution of distilled water and caustic soda. We know that water, this is a bit of a, a science lesson, I'm trying not to make it too boring. We know that water is um, a, a conductor of electricity, it's just not a good conductor of electricity. So we put caustic soda, a solution of, of um, uh, caustic soda and, and um, distilled water into this unit and that's basically the uh, electrolyte that it runs on. Um, this is circulated through the system with a 12 volt pump to keep it going. So this area here, the, this hose here, the solution, will be plumbed through to this point my apologies. This here will be plumbed through to this point here where the solution is pumped into this hydrogen generator. It's made up of three cells. And as you can see, we have power applied here and then it is interconnected through the other cells. Inside there is a series of um, 316 stainless steel plates that are coated to protect them from corrosion. And Obviously enough, they're connected up here in, in series to, um, uh, to power the whole thing up. So the solution of distilled water and caustic soda is pumped in through here. That fills that, that void and then it will come out of there with the hydrogen and oxygen gas. By applying power to the, distilled, uh, to the uh, stainless steel plates that are in there, that um, uh, creates a bubbling effect the same sort of thing that you will see in any electric jug where the element goes into the water and as it's boiling you will see bubbles coming from there. Well that's basically what's happening here and we're not boiling it. It will create a temperature of somewhere around about 60 to 70 degrees C. It's warm but not boiling. So that gas, water and um, oxygen and, and hydrogen will be coming out of there back into that bottle back into here, that will come into here. This side here, the gas, will then head off in towards the engine. So there's no gas pressurized, there's no gas storage system. This has gas come in through here. Um, it will be drawn off into the engine through this side here. But it goes through what's known as a bubbler, okay? The gas will go in, into the bubbler. There'll be a, a tube that goes down to the bottom of the bubbler. That there will be three parts full of um, uh, distilled water. This is basically the circuit breaker, the fuse. So that if the engine was to backfire or have a problem like that, it will only come back down the plastic tube to this point. It won't affect this, it won't affect any other componentry in the truck. That's the fuse. So that will stop explosions happening. Um, the, the gas is then in through the solution. It will bubble up and then is drawn off into the engine from there. And it is drawn off basically into the, directly into the inlet manifold. There's no, as I say, there's no storage. There's no pressurization. The engine draws that off, hence hydrogen on demand. And it is there at a pretty constant flow. So it won't matter what the load of the vehicle is, whether it's idling or full noise, you draw off the same amount. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll piece this thing here together just quickly, and then I'll put this into the box. But just a, a, a quick little 
piece. This Anderson plug here will provide power to the hydrogen generator, okay? And I've used red plugs instead of the gray. These gray plugs will have battery power coming from the battery on the truck in through here and will bolt, it will um, uh, be fastened here to the uh, PCB. The reason for that, they cannot be mistakenly plugged in. The last thing I need to be doing is putting power down this side of the board. So that cannot be interconnected or mistakenly connected. It is simply red to red, and I haven't got a gray one there, but gray to gray. So for me, that makes it idiot proof. Um, I wouldn't like to be messing things up. The whole time that you're doing this sort of thing, think about what can go wrong. That is one of those things that can go wrong. So I've got two gray Anderson plugs there and they will, um, they will handle the battery input. This will handle the uh, input of power into the hydrogen generator. So very simply, the shunt will then be fitted up inside. Try and get that to locate. Then I just put the, the lid on the box There we go. Okay. Push that out of the way. So that'll hold that down. That allows me now to screw that top on, seal it all up, um, and then that will be mounted in underneath the dashboard. And once I've got to that point, I'll show you how that all sits and how it operates and, and when it is operating. So that's a little way off yet. But we'll put this into the, um, uh, into the, the box that will house it all. I've got to uh, make it fairly secure and strong because this is gonna deal with, that's got quite a bit of weight in it. This has got to be fairly strong because the truck bouncing around out in the bush can damage things very very easily. There's a 12 volt pump if you can see down in there this 12 volt pump will circulate the, um, the solution. Um, now it's got to be pretty good because that, that solution with caustic soda is just that it's quite caustic. There's a lot of reflection there from the, um, the sealing up of the bottom of it. But it basically, it'll sit in there like as though it's a battery. I'm not sure how many kilos are in that. Enough. Ah, okay. That sits in there like so. There's a simple hold down clamp. Once that there is um, secured and the plumbing to the, um, to the pump to circulate the solution, here is where our uh, line will come out, heading out to the engine and the, the um, uh, via the bubbler. The bubbler will have, yeah, we'll go from there to the bubbler, from the bubbler to the, uh, the intake manifold. So once I've got a little bit further along, um, I will show you how that there works, how it fits up. The other thing that I'll be doing is between the battery and this unit here, I'll just put a simple um, isolation switch on it uh, so that they will handle the power. So if I have to, I can turn it off very, very quickly. And also running a 40 amp resettable circuit breaker. All these sort of things here will take care of the, um, uh, the electrical safety side of things so we don't have things melting down. There's still a little bit of work to do yet, but that's sort of the, the basic concept and idea. And like I said, do your research. Um, feel free to ask me questions. If I can, I will answer them. Um, I have a pretty reasonable knowledge of what makes things work. 
the beauty of having this in the truck is the first thing I noticed when I had it in the, in the Land Rover was everything engine wise ran so much smoother. That was before I looked at the little bit of extra power. There's claims that these things here will give you 20 to 30 percent increase in power. I didn't ex experience that and I don't expect to, being a realist. If I get a 10 percent increase in power, I'll be over the moon. I'm not chasing power. Um, I'm chasing economy and just cleaning up the way that the truck runs. Not that it's a big issue, it's Euro 5 spec. The fuel consumption is my thing. I, I'm a, a real fan of performance with economy. Um, it has performance, this will help the economy. Uh, again, there's stated claims of anything up to 45% improvement in economy. I can't see that happening. Um, not well ever you're, you're being honest with yourself. The realistic figure I would think is probably closer to like 10 to maybe 20% at a push. Um, if it goes beyond that, yeah, I'll be over the moon. So we're going to set this thing up and have it all um, ready to make up a frame. I'll have to make up a frame to fit up in the back of the truck. So that'll be uh, another stage. The main thing is getting this here sorted out, ready to make up a frame, ready to fit in there. So that will be another part of a video um, for now. Cheers. Remember, if you have any questions, don't forget to ask. <laughs>